Welcome to Beyond the Horizon podcast, a show all about the Horizon ecosystem and the exciting world of blockchain and Web3. Join us as we explore the latest happenings in this rapidly evolving space and discover new horizons together. Now let's go Beyond the Horizon. Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Horizon. Today in episode five, we'll be welcoming on Jason Atkins of Forus. They're a market maker and they'll be discussing how ecosystem liquidity really helps bring about an incredible ecosystem on a new chain such as Eon. We'll also be going into the news shortly, but uh, before that, I wanted to say a very happy birthday to Horizon. The project is turning six on May 30th. So if this episode goes out after that, happiest of birthdays, Horizon. And we look forward to everything that we're going to accomplish with the community this year. In this month's news, we have a lot of great updates for everyone, including but not limited to the new Zen 4.00 version, which include a lot of great new features, including non-seasable sidechains updates, key rotation, and one version, which means that bit core versions of Zen binaries will no longer be released. There will only be one version going forward. We're very excited about that update and hope that you guys are as well. The update is mandatory for all exchanges, mining pools, node operators, and full wallet users. So if you fall into one of those categories, be sure to update soon. Uh, you can find all of the update links in our blog, which you can go to at horizon.io slash news. We've also announced some recent new partnerships for Horizon Eon specifically. This includes Fiddlebox, which is going to be doing hackathons with us, as well as Covalent, who is aggregating data on Eon for us. We've also recently announced a partnership with Band Protocol to bring decentralized Oracle capabilities to Eon. We recommend you check out all of these great new announcements on our blog as well. Now we're going to go ahead and move into our interview with Jason Atkins. Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Horizon. Today on episode five, we have Jason Atkins from Aorus. He is working with us on market making for Horizon Eon. Welcome, Jason. Hey, Erica. Thanks for having me. Of course. So you're pretty new to the Horizon community and they don't have a lot of experience with market makers previously. Uh, through Horizon. Can you tell us a little bit more about your background? Yeah, sure. So yeah, I've, I've been in crypto for a little over two years. I joined at the end of 2021. I'm the head of business development and partnerships at Aorus. Um, a large part of my role is working with a lot of our external partners, which is how Erica and I started working together and working with the Horizon team. Um, we're excited about the new upcoming Eon chain and how we can support liquidity for the whole entire ecosystem. Amazing. And we're super excited to start working with you guys as well. Can you explain to our community a little bit about what Aorus does? Yeah. So Aorus is a high frequency uh, trading firm. We have operated in the space since 2019. Uh, the company was founded by a couple of ex Optiver alumni, which is a Dutch high frequency trading firm, mostly known for its activity in the traditional finance space. Um, ben Roth, the CIO and Brendan Scott, uh, the CTO founded the firm and built out a team of developers, technologists that built the trading systems that allow us to be large, um, institutional sized traders across all of crypto assets. So we trade everything from spot, uh, futures, perpetuals, options, structured products. And when we say we trade them, the activity to the rest of the market looks like providing liquidity. So we act as the buyer and seller of multiple crypto assets across thousands of instruments on dozens of exchanges at any given time. Um, and the reason that we do that is mostly for our core trading activities. So that's arbitraging across various venues, um, ensuring that price harmonization occurs and making sure that correct price discovery is happening. Um, alongside that, as we built out that tech stack over the last five years, it became apparent to us that the sophistication required to deliver that sort of liquidity was very beneficial for external partners as well. So Ben started to explore how we could utilize that tech to help um, external partners. 
And that's sort of how we ended up on this journey with Horizon and exploring how we can help the Aeon ecosystem grow into what it ultimately can be. And that's where Horus sort of acts as the grease in the wheels of the system itself. So we ensure that there's sufficient liquidity for all participants to buy, to sell, to hold with confidence, um, to trade, to stake, to do all of the activities that go with any blockchain. Um, market makers serve in a key role in that process of allowing participants to trade with confidence and participate with confidence. I love that. Um, I did notice you said like a lot of technical words there. Uh, maybe for the people who are a little less technical um, and a little newer to crypto, could you explain a little bit about what market making is uh, at a really base level, um, just just for educational purposes? Yeah, for sure. So market making at its core level is acting as the bid or the buyer and the offer or the seller of an asset. So in crypto, that might be Bitcoin or it might be Horizon or Zen, the Zen token. Um, in traditional finance, that can be Google stock or it can be wheat futures. It can be any given asset. The market maker acts as someone who's prepared to buy from someone who wants to sell and sell to someone who wants to buy. Now, that doesn't necessarily have to be because they have a view that the market's going higher or lower. They're doing it because they have the capabilities to act as the buyer and then hedge that trade itself immediately or otherwise using another instrument or another venue or statistically holding that over a period of time. But essentially market making is creating the market itself, allowing for price discovery to occur. Without market making, you would have natural trading interest in very illiquid conditions. So if someone wanted to buy, the price might move very quickly higher and then immediately come back lower or very quickly lower and immediately come back higher. So you, you have a very difficult position when there's no market making of having a lack of price discovery. Market makers help to smooth that process and in essence, reduce volatility, which is something that a mature and healthy market needs. That makes perfect sense. Um, so that sounds very interesting. Can you explain a little bit about what price discovery is for people who may have not have heard that term before? Yep, definitely. So price discovery is in essence, when someone would like to buy something for a certain price, if no one's prepared to sell it to them, they might say you wanted to buy a car for a thousand dollars and no one was prepared to sell it for a thousand dollars, but they're prepared to sell it for two thousand dollars. You would slowly move your bid or the buy price higher and the person who was prepared to sell it may move their price lower and eventually you would meet at an equilibrium level say fifteen hundred dollars and that would be the level of price discovery that would occur a market maker will act as both the buyer and the seller on either side of the market to facilitate the other side of the trade which is the buyer who wants to buy and the seller who wants to sell thank you yeah so that makes a lot of sense and I greatly appreciate you explaining that to our community. Um, I know that market makers can be kind of enigmatic in the space, I suppose. Um, can you explain a little bit about how Aorus is different from other market makers? Yeah, so Aorus is a, a high frequency trading firm, which that phrase might have been bandied around and a lot of people don't know what that means. But it is, in essence, it means that we hold trades for short amounts of time. So when we're trading in something as that market maker, so the buyer or the seller, we don't generally hold on to it and hope that the market would go higher if we bought or lower if we have sold. What we're doing is we're hedging that immediately against something else. So that doesn't necessarily make us different from all other trading firms, but it puts us in a group of trading firms that are known as high frequency trading firms. What separates us from the pack is the amount of technological sophistication that goes into our trading systems. So essentially over the last five years, Ben and Brendan and the team at Aorus have built the tech stack that's able to allow us to act as a large percentage of global daily volume. So depending on market conditions, but on any given day, that can range from anywhere between one and 3% of all crypto volume is going through our firm. And that means that we're facilitating a lot of global volume in spot and futures, perpetuals and options, um, and allowing 
the market to continually trade in a healthy and stable manner. Um, as far as differentiation goes, as we work with external partners, um, I think our firm takes a very novel solutions-based approach. The way we started working with the Horizon team, for example, was Erica and I connected and started to discuss what Horizon needed for the Aeon chain and what the potential hurdles were for Eon becoming one of the more successful blockchains in the space. And as we discussed those hurdles, Aorus took the approach of looking at our skill set, our tech stack, and the people that we have working for us, the traders, the developers, the engineers, and working out how we can utilize that skill set to help deliver those solutions. So a lot of our competitors in the space, very well established and very well known for what they do which is an excellent thing to have. It's brand and it's, it's the building blocks of why people work with you. We try to look at it differently and understand that crypto is a fast moving, innovative space. And a lot of the requirements are new and unique. So we try to work with our partners first to understand what they need and then solve for those problems themselves. I think that part alone, that approach is, is one of the major differentiations of how we work with external partners. And I'm very inclined to agree. I know that there were a lot of discussions just between yourself and, and myself trying to figure out exactly how we can work together to really make Eon a successful chain. Definitely. So that kind of leads me into our next question here from the community. Uh, can you kind of explain for the community how Horizon and Oros are going to work together to really uh, create a successful and highly usable uh, chain. Yeah, so as, as the Horizon team started to explain to us what they're trying to do with Aeon, we started to understand that if you're to build a successful blockchain, it's the base layer upon which everything else is built. And as the Horizon team brings in a multitude of external teams that are going to be building dApps that are across the Aeon chain and, and will allow it to thrive and become an ecosystem or, or a place where people can operate, transact, build other projects on top of. One of the key requirements for that is to have stable liquidity. So the solutions-based approach that I just spoke about looks very closely at what are these other projects that are going to be building on top of Aeon going to need. And Erica and I discussed at length how we can act as a cornerstone liquidity provider for everyone. And that's not to say we've looked at commercial deals with every project that potentially is coming because we don't know where that's going. There's going to be a lot of projects building and a lot more to come that haven't even thought about building on Aeon yet. But as the chain expands and the ecosystem explodes, they're going to need that liquidity support because liquidity is, as I said earlier, the grease that make sure the wheels keep on turning. And that goes for everything from lending and borrowing protocols to AMMs building on top to NFT platforms. And Aorus has the capabilities and the skills and the desire to actually work with teams to solve those problems. And if we can help in our way with liquidity, then I feel like we're doing our part to make sure that Eon is going to be the most successful it can be. Now, you mentioned NFT platforms. How does market making for a token translate all the way over to NFTs? So it's, it's similar, I guess, in the sense that we talked about you can market make for any asset. The difference is with non-fungible tokens is that they're non-fungible. So it becomes a little more difficult when every single unique NFT is unique. That's the design of, of why they're NFTs. Um, that being said, we've seen novel solutions in the NFT market space, uh, market making space where market makers are able to bundle in, in similar ways to traditional finance, bundle into baskets and have an index of certain attributes or certain quality of attributes of certain NFTs. So when you're talking about very well-known projects, um, crypto punks and board a yacht club, and you can sort of start to understand the attributes that are desirable, you can chart them as we've all seen. You can track properties that are valuable and not, and you can sort of start to put floor price bids and floor and floor ceiling offers into the market. And in similar ways, 
that is market making. It's a little more illiquid. It's a little more difficult because everything's non-fungible. But on NFT platforms, that's possible. Um, when it comes to NFT platforms that have a token, for example, a token that might incentivize users to trade more NFTs or incentivize users to hold, whatever that token utility might be, when you start to bring that token utility and the tokenomics into the platform, you then need to start thinking about how do I create liquidity for that token? Because if you create some, some platform that has a token that has utility, but there's no liquidity on that token, you then have sort of undercut the benefits of holding or buying or trading or staking that token itself. So solving for liquidity is something that all projects should start to think about, especially when they start on that token journey. And, and part of the reason we were so excited to work with the Horizon team and work on Eon is that we think that a lot of projects are going to look to build on this chain and we can really be supportive in so many different ways when it comes to being a power user on the platform or just helping with the token itself. We're sort of interested in working with Erica and the team over there to understand the whole entire community's needs. Thank you. I know I kind of threw a uh, curveball at you there, but you answered that beautifully. Um, it does lead me into uh, a, another question, though. Can you kind of explain one thing that's maybe a little misunderstood about market making in the space? Yep. I think, I mean, I think the, the worst part about market making is probably the name. Um, the phrase market making acts as this all encompassing phrase that everyone talks about and assumes that it means the same thing across everything. And I know we've just spoken in very general terms about a wide variety of market making. I think when projects come to us and say, can you market make? My first question to them is, what do you need me to market make? Like it's, it's a very broad question with a multitude of different answers. If I'm market making Bitcoin, for example, I can be the bid and the offer in large size in very tight spreads, which is just being a very good market, I guess, because there are a multitude of ways I can hedge that position. When you go to more illiquid assets, right out to the NFTs we were just talking about, but even just tokens that are further down the top, call it the top 500 or the top 1000 coins, it becomes a much more difficult activity. And the, the concept of market making becomes a little different. So I think for all people in the space, understanding what it means to be the buyer when the market's going down and to be the seller when the market's going up is important to differentiate as tokens fluctuate in their market cap, in their liquidity profile, in their organic liquidity, in the activity and the utility of each token. Everything is different in crypto, right? Bitcoin, Ethereum, top one, top two, but at the same time, extremely different in how they operate, why people trade them and how they're utilized as the top two crypto tokens or cryptocurrencies in the space. Wonderful. Thank you so much for explaining that. You did mention the word spreads before a couple of times. Could you explain what that means to our community? Of course. So it goes back to what we were talking about before. As a market maker, we act as the buyer and the seller. So the spread itself is the the measurement between the tightest bid or the, the closest bid to the market and the closest offer. So in my car example before, if everyone can remember back to that, if you were trying to buy a car at $1,000 and the other guy was trying to sell a car at $2,000, the spread is the width between those two numbers, in this case, $1,000. And as we move towards that price discovery, it may be in the middle or it might be at $1,700 or $1,800, depending on who's a better negotiator or who's more desperate to buy or sell a car. But the spread itself is the width of the market. And generally speaking, the more liquid a market is, it tends to have a tighter spread when it comes to relativity. So you're thinking Bitcoin is the tightest spread in the market, but really that's just a reflection of the desire of people to buy and sell a lot. And there's a lot of natural trading activity because if the buyer and the seller can't match and someone else wants to buy, they'll come in front of the buyer and someone else wants to sell, they'll sit in front of the seller. And suddenly the spread starts to tighten and tighten and tighten 
until you have a very narrow spread. And that's what I was referring to when I said spread. Thank you for the explanation. Okay, so we're up at our last question. Is there anything else that you'd like to mention or say or talk about about market making or our partnership? No, I think I just want to reiterate that we're we're extremely excited to work with the Horizon team and and we're extremely excited for Eon to launch. Um, we have a long road ahead, I think, with our partnership with Erica and the team, and we have a lot of work to do. Um, I think our involvement in the community is just starting now. Um, and I speak to everyone at Aorus when I say that while there's a lot of work to do, we're excited and enthusiastic about what that means for us. I think there's a lot of opportunities to come. Um, I think there's a lot of things that we can't predict yet. And we're kind of here to be ready for all of that. We try to solve problems. Um, we try to help ecosystems to be as successful as they can. And we really want to make sure that all the work that the Horizon team is putting in, coupled with the work that we're planning to put in and, and are starting to put in already, um, will lead to some of the most successful will lead to the most successful environment for everyone who's involved at all levels of the community, from the smallest token holder to the biggest project that's planning to build on top of Eon. We want to be there every step of the way. So we're excited. And I can speak for the entire team as well. We're also super excited to partner with Orest, especially around Eon. It's going to be a wonderful partnership and we look forward to figuring out what problems arise and how we can solve them together. Thank you so Likewise. much for joining Thank you so Thanks. much for Thanks, joining Erica. me today, Jason. I hope uh, that we'll have you on again soon. Um, I think that as we continue to grow the chain together, it'll be very interesting for the community to see exactly how we're working together and what hurdles we've overcome together. Yeah, likewise, we'd, we'd love to be back and look forward to speaking to you and the team and the community as much as we can in the coming years. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us on Beyond the Horizon. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes as we continue to discover the limitless potential of the Horizon ecosystem. If you liked this episode, make sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time.